So I'm excited. Jeremy, I've seen this man wrestle at Greektown Wrestling for years now. Very, very, very happy to welcome him as he starts to wind down on his career. Or maybe not. It's wrestling. We'll see. Uh, folks, <laughs> looking forward to this. Uh, he's going to be at IWC Wrestling Winner Take All this Saturday, November 4th at the Courtside Sports Center in Elizabeth, PA. The one and only king of the one-night stand joins us now, Jock Samson. Hello, sir. How are you? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. I, you know, I'm just learning how to do technology here. I don't know if you can hear me or not. or uh, you sound like I'm, I am the worst human being on the face of the earth when it comes to technology. Oh, that's okay. Like, uh, it, it's not a gimmick. I really am a country ass little, uh, you know, uh, little guy here. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't even own a home. I don't even own a computer. I'm doing this on my telephone. Most Can you hear? Yeah, most people do. Can you hear us? Okay, Jock. Yeah, I hear you guys. Okay. Great. You guys right, look good. good. Looking good. Looking good. All right, right we're, back, we're all good then. So, so let's talk about it. You're you're getting to the end of things. You're getting to your your wrestling career. Uh, you're going to be at IWC Wrestling. You're going to be, I guess, taking your your final bow. How does it feel to be at that stage in your career so many years later? Oh, man. Um, so my, my 18th year would have started last um, – it would have started the 30th, so whatever that was a couple of days ago on Sunday. And, you know, I said from day one, oh, I just want to get about 10 years in. And then I'll find, you know, whatever happens, happens. And then, you know, happened to be 18 years now since my first match, 1100. And this Saturday it will be 1171. Um, and, you know, there's there's a part of me that is, and it's a big part of me that's, uh, that's relieved. And I've got a cat that's going to be coming up here on the screen here in a second. Perfect. He just, he just wants to get, he, he, he's a son of a, he's a, there he is. That's Melvin. Okay. He's a nosy little butt. Hang on a sec. Oh. I can't tell my life story without a cat, <laughs> cat's butthole. <clears throat> no, but there's part of me that's really excited that I'm going to get to do a lot of stuff that I've yet to been able to do in the uh, last whatever, seven, 18 years. You know, I have a nine-year-old daughter um, that I'm going to get to spend a lot more time with. And, and that's very important to me. And I'm sad, but <clears throat> more so I'm excited about this next chapter of my life. Get out of here, boy. You nosy. <laughs> Saying I'm always about you. <laughs> nah. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm really excited about it, man. Uh, you know, I'm going to miss my friends, but I'll still come back and visit. Um, you know, I know my wife, she's kind of nervous about the whole thing because she's used to me being gone, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Now I'm going to be stuck up her ass and I don't know how she's going to take that. You know, she's probably going to tell me, get the hell out of the house, and go do something, go to the moose club and, and drink a little bit, go bowling, you know, which hell that's not a bad thing, but, uh, yeah, I got a lot of sports to watch. So I got a lot of sports to watch. I'm a big sports fan. I would yeah, jump yeah, in, yeah. into that. So, okay, you I know from Ohio as well. I see the Ohio uh, shirt hoodie uh, that they yep. got going on. Uh, OSU? Yeah, um, the Ohio State University. Um, big Buckeye fan. A big Ohio Bobcat fan where um, where, where AJ Wheelett, uh went to college at. It's about 10 minutes from my house uh, where OU is. But it, it's, a Buc it's a Buckeye State, man. It, it's all about Ohio State football. Uh, you know, next year I have I have a pact with a real close friend of mine that we're going to go to one home game and one away game at Ohio State every year, and I go to as many OU football games that I possibly can. Uh, I'm a big Reds fan. Okay. So I'm I'm a long time suffering Reds fan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm I'm from Ohio as well. I I just moved here a couple years ago. I guess three years ago now. Jeez. Um, I'm long not not super long time. Reds fan, but since the days of uh, since the days of uh, Johnny Cueto and Araldus Chapman, who are still around uh, in in the league, but yeah. not on the Reds anymore. Um, yes, I, I'm with you on to Red suffering and all that. Yeah, all that fun stuff. yeah. I got to see him win the World Series in 1990. Okay, see, I have not. And uh, that was 
that was I was eleven years old. <laughs> <laughs> But when your team wins a championship when you're a kid, it's more special. Yeah, I don't know. It might be unless you're like if you were a 95 year old Cubs fan. I guess when they won the World Series, that might have been pretty cool. <laughs> I think it's special regardless. Like my my hockey yeah. team, which is the only team I've seen win a title. They won it when I was younger. When I was like 12, they won they won it, and then they won it just uh, not this past year, but the year before. So a little bit older as well. So 20 years between championships. You no know, special both times, honestly. Well, I know it's not the Blue Jackets, so we'll just leave it at that. Not the Blue Jackets. It is the uh, Colorado Avalanche is my, my hockey team. <laughs> Joe Sackett. There you go. Yeah, I went to the <laughs> I went to the Blue Jackets and Avs game uh, the year that they won the, the Cup uh, two years ago, and the Blue Jackets beat them, and I was very sad. But, you know, it, did all, it all ended up ended yeah. for it. Joel, we're going to talk sports this whole time, so you better jump in here with a wrestling question. I mean, well, let, no, let's talk about AJ Olet because you've had a chance to work with him in the ring, and, you know, he's a, a very well-known, you mentioned Bobcat, and also he is a, a Toronto Argonauts uh, running yeah. back. So let's talk about it. Do you got a chance to work in the ring and, and potentially even train him a little bit? What was the experience like uh, working with a, with a pro footballer in the ring? Well, you know, when you get a guy who's a professional athlete, you know, that takes his craft very seriously. Um, it, it was it was really easy. It, it, I mean, honestly, I think it was such an easy trans uh, translation from from pro football to pro wrestling for him because he, you know, he's the number one running back in the CFL. Like, I think he has a chance to have a, a career after his pro football days. Pro football days. Um. The dude, dude's a great dude, great human being, <clears throat> you know, works. I mean, you think about this. He was a walk-on, and you guys know what a walk-on is up, yes. uh, you know, up in Canada? Okay. <laughs> All right. I, I wasn't real sure, you know, uh, the American lingo, American football, but the dude never got a scholarship offer. He walked on at Ohio University. He fought tooth and nail, earned a scholarship, and – you know, so he, he went there and started for four years as a walk-on at Ohio University for the legendary Frank Solich. Then he, he, he go tries to get in the NFL, and they just give him the typical, you know, you're, you know, we can't do nothing with you because you're, you know, you're a small-time running back. And, and uh, you know, so he goes up to CFL, and he's proven everybody wrong. Like he's got a thousand yards rushing this year. He's a two time all star in the CFL. I mean, and I wouldn't be surprised that if an NFL team wouldn't come a calling. I'm sorry, Toronto Argonauts fans. Uh, and I know the, and he'll be, he has a chance to be a, a fullback in the NFL. You know, if someone, there, there's not many teams that ha, needs fullbacks, but there's few that would. And I tell you right now, he would make a great fullback. He would play, he would play safety if they would let him, as long as he could get, you know, on the field. But uh, wonderful team guy. From when I was talking to a lot of his teammates, they just thank the world of him. That's Thor. They've been calling him Thor. Redneck Thor. I could see that, actually. <laughs> I mean, yeah. so the dude's wide as hell, so I get it. <laughs> yeah, he's probably five foot seven, and about as wide as a as a Buick. So I mean, he's a big dude. <laughs> yeah, we, I had a chance to to chat with him uh, when he when he did the tag match with you at Greek Town a few months back, and uh, I just remember looking at him, just being like, "Oh, you're you're I'm a little bit taller than you, but like, man, you're you're a refrigerator of a man. Like he's a yeah." Big. We barely fit into frame together, so that was fun. Um, let's talk about your your you're a throwback wrestler. You said so much in the, the uh, promoter the, the stuff that, that IWC wrestling's putting together about you, the package. How would how did you find your foot being that throwback guy for so many years? Well, you know, I grew up watching 80s, 70s, and 80s wrestling. Um, my my favorite wrestler is Hulk Hogan. You know, I mean, that didn't get more 1980s than that. Um, it just, that's the style. Like a lot of guys, it, it's the style. You, you do the style that you like, that you grew up watching. Like, you know, you can tell a lot of the guys today are watching a lot of the modern wrestlers because they're flying around the ring and, and my ass ain't flying. <laughs> Keep my feet on the ground and we'll talk shit. I'm going to work with the crowd. Um, 
you know, my generation coming up, it was all about crowd participation without um, saying, hey, come do this with me. You know, we were taught crowd participation, but you're working the crowd. You get paid to work the crowd. Crowd doesn't work you. So I think that, and it also works to my benefit with everybody flying around the ring and me being me, you know, I stand out because everyone's, you know, everybody, if everyone's screaming and you're talking, you're going to stand out. If everyone's running, then you should walk. So it's good that I was different. It's weird that the throwback, you know, what's, let me put it this way. What is uh, old is new. So, and they're not used to seeing you could put a poll up right now and say, is Andre the Giant a top 10 greatest wrestler? And, and they, they would all vote him no because they never got to see him. And that would piss me off something fierce when I would, would read that. It would piss me something off fierce. You know, people tell me that Hawk Hogan ain't a great wrestler. And I'm like, well, he drew 93,000 people. That tells me he's a great professional wrestler, whether he could wrestle or not. But it's good that... Uh, you know, that everyone's doing their thing and I'm out there doing mine and I'm showing people that the older ways could work in the newer days. You, somebody you've wrestled a lot uh, recently, kind of got a little bit of rival rivalry with in uh, IWC, Cole Carter. Uh, mm -hmm. How, how punchable is that man's face? <laughs> the fact that he is pretty and he doesn't know why. <laughs> I mean, you can't, uh, like, I've never seen a human being, like, you, you ever seen the movie Airheads? Yes, yeah, it's been yeah. a while, but yeah. Okay, you know the drummer Pip, played by Adam Sandler? Yep. Mm. Ain't got a clue why women are attracted to him, but they just are. <laughs> you know, it just is what it is. I mean, he was born with a, a great ability. He was born with a great physique, a great face. Um, but, yeah, it's a punchable face. I mean... But truth be, truth be told, like the kid's the future of the business and he's more like me than he is like a lot of the newer generation. Like he, you know, there's a lot of stuff that he does that I did at a younger age. Granted, I ain't never jumped off the top rope like, like he does, but, but there's a lot of stuff that he does that I would have done 18 years ago. So the kid's the future of the business. Uh, there ain't no doubt about that. And if he was smart, he'd stay away from Justin Plummer. <laughs> I know in, in AEW, he's working uh, a little bit with uh, Luther, um, Japanese death math legend, Luther. And uh, Luther has, has spoken highly of him as well. So getting, getting kind of some old school training from, from you guys, which is uh, good to see. And, and top of that, the kid went to church with my father-in-law. It, it, it the strangest, weirdest place in, in little hillbilly West Virginia. When he first came up, we really had, we really got along pretty well because we had a lot of things in common. Like we're both small town kids. I mean, he's from literally Sissonville, West Virginia, where they made that Buck Wild MTV show. You ever seen that show, Buck yes. Wild? Yes. That's where that town. He knows okay. all those people. That's where he grew up. Sissonville, West Virginia. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so, and, and my father-in-law hated the fact that people thought that the people of Pocatalico and Sissonville, West Virginia were like that. Cole, Cole just kind of, he's like, well, that is what it is. I mean, but yeah, he went to, he went to church with my father-in-law, this little church down. I can't remember. I can't remember the name of the church, but I just know he did, you know, so it, it, small world. So speaking of, uh, punchable faces. You had a very fun rivalry with one RJ City, and I find it very interesting that you're talking about, you know, the differences of someone flying around in the ring and how you were standing out and being different. RJ is very similar to your breed, very character driven, very talky talk and not, you know, he's not a flipper flyer either. So let's talk about RJ City working with him for as long as you did. Oh, wow. You know, as long as we've worked together, we've probably had two matches. 
to like against each other. One time he was the crowd favorite, which is odd up there, and the other time was with you know where I'm the crowd favorite. Um, you couldn't have two people more unalike personally. You know, he he leaves a big city guy, and I'm I'm a hick. But when it comes to our styles, um, we're storytellers. We we tell the same stories in the ring, you know. Uh, except I don't read, but I like to, I like a good story. Uh, but RJ, I'm sure he reads the book, and he also likes a good story. But it, it just worked, you know. And wrestling styles do make fights. And you have a lot of styles that, you know, walk all over each other. But just some reason, you know, as oil and water as we are personally and personality-wise, but we just mesh together. And it's one of my favorite matches I think I've ever had is where, when, when uh, I can't, I, I think it was about Christmas time right before COVID, like 19. And we just had this great match and they were ready to boo him and they were finally ready to cheer me, which was kind of odd. Because, you know, when I came to Toronto, basically my shtick isn't a very likable shtick. So, and they, 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 they went and started cheering me, which was very odd. And, and it had to be the right guy. And RJ City was the right guy to make sure the crowd starts uh, appreciating me. I was just, I went into my Google Photos and you nailed it. I, I have photos from that match against RJ City, and the mm-hmm. crowd was going nuts. And it was, I was actually looking for the photo of you gifting a cowboy hat to him. Oh yeah, yeah. Did you actually, keep that hat. I still. What's that? Did Did either y'all keep that hat? I have it. You have it. It's my lawnmower. It's my mowing hat. <laughs> <laughs> like it's still so. A, a fan named Joe Hagen, and I believe he's a ring announcer now. He uh. I saw that they had cowboy hat night, which is it's more like an Australian hat. Ain't no damn cowboy hat, but it, it was cool. So I said, God, I, I said online, I said, man, that's a cool hat. And he brought it to that show. So I said, that's an Argonauts A right there on the hat. And uh, yeah, that was, yeah, that was right after I had my belly licked by a fan, which was kind of the, the most oddest thing that ever, ever happened to me. And there's videos some places, and probably on my damn TikTok. But she she licked my belly, and I get in the ring, and I look at RJ, and I go, ah, "Damn, that was that was kind of awkward." Wait, why did why did she lick your belly? Are you just uh, walking in the ring, and she decided to? You know, when you're walking around a, a big city like like Toronto, Ontario, and you got this big hillbilly walking around, you kind of stand out, and some women just like grown ass men. You know that work for you know that, that that have calluses on their hands and shit. So it just I, I look different. It's like it's my story of my life. I am different than everybody else, and I stand out because I'm loud. I'm boisterous. You know I don't look like somebody who uh, a woman would want to lick a belly, but she wanted to lick my belly. Are you hold on. He's gonna hate me for this, but this is, here's RJ. <laughs> oh boy. There's there's the hat there's the combo right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a picture somewhere of me sitting on a lawnmower with a cigar in my mouth, and I'm, <laughs> and I've got that hat on my head. <laughs> Fantastic. I still wear it. Uh, you were you were Mister One Night Stand, but you were king also of, king of the one night stand. King of the one night stand. Apologies, but yeah, also sir. married with with, with uh, at least one ch- child that you have mentioned. Uh, how does that? I know of. That I know of. <laughs> yeah, well, um, as the honky tonk man once said, what happens on the road stays on the road. I, I, I guess I got to give you credit then, Joel. That, that was the answer you gave. I'm well, trying not you. to get your marriage in trouble here, is all. That well, is, you know. I don't know. If, but, you know, my wife is actually deaf. And I swear, you know, swear to God. But so I tell her all the time. I just not my problem that she hears it or not. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> and, oh. and she would think that would be funny because, I, you know, to be honest, I, I got the moniker because and the one part about 
me getting out of the business that I'm relieved is I can, you know, uh, Jock Sampson is Jock Sampson. Yeah, and, and it's very close. It's it's me. There ain't no hiding it except I wear glasses and I don't always walk around in a cowboy hat. And but it's pretty close to to what my to what I am as a, as a person. But I I spent a lot of time with Missy Hyatt, and she's the one that actually gave me that moniker. And she started putting it online and started calling me the king of the one night stand. And we were having a great time going back and forth on Twitter where she, where I was swinging by her house all the time and, you know, giving her a, giving her a quick picker upper. And, uh, she, she's the one who really put that on, on, on the line. And when the moment she said that, I was like, well, I'm taking that. And I put it on the back of the jacket and, and, uh, I've had a lot of fun with this moniker, you know, so excuse me, my air fryer is going off. Don't have to rush. You hear that in the background. Best thing ever invented. What are you, what are you Okay, yeah. What are you making? I have just chicken in there right now. Oh, that sounds chicken good. and baked potatoes. Oh, let's oh, go. That's good. Where, are you, where are you at in Ohio? Am I might, depending on where you're at, I can be over in like twenty minutes. I'm, <laughs> I'm in the be- I'm in the, the Appalachian part of Ohio, in beautiful southeastern Ohio, about an hour from the Hocken Hills. Okay, I'm in Akron, so let's. I know where Akron. I know all about Akron. I know about I'm. I, you know, I know about Akron. I know yeah. about LeBron City. Yeah, that's uh, that's. You know, I'm I'm right near the the Promise School and and all that. So uh, that's, yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. I'm a two hour, two hour and twenty minute drive from you. All right, so see, we we'll get the get the chicken going. Come yeah, up there. Right, we'll we'll right. have some right. some chicken and some drinks and we'll have a great well, we, old time. We can do that, buddy. We can do that. <laughs> I like how I'm just inviting myself over for like dinner and drinks and stuff. <laughs> well, hey, brother, if, if you want to drink and have a good time, I'm the guy. To, I'm the guy to meet. I, I I respect it. I respect it. All the Ohio people we have on this show are great. You know, I'm Ohio is. Uh, it's I'm the greatest here. state. It's the greatest state in the history of the world. It's it's better than any any other place. It's the greatest place. I would never want to live anywhere else. I hate Florida. It's it hot and it stinks. Mm-hmm. Texas sucks. Texas is overrated. It sucks. You know, California, mm-hmm. New York, mm-hmm. it's Ohio. The state of Michigan, I would like to see it just leave the United States. <laughs> Fair. I mean, honestly, same with Florida. Florida, you can bury all day, and, and I'm with you on it. The You know, the great Bugs Bunny clip of him just cutting off Florida from the entire mm-hmm. United States. That's that's probably what should. What should I could there. probably spend time and just talk shit on everybody's state, and then I could spend a whole hour talking about how probably longer than that about how great Ohio is. <laughs> John, before we get you out of here, I asked you this question once in an interview, but I got to ask it again because this is it. This is this is the last stand for the king of the one night stand. Weirdest yeah. match you've ever wrestled? Oh Jesus Christ! Uh, yeah, we're going back now. <laughs> Now I got 1100, 1171 matches. Well, well it's stand out, man. So I had a match. I, I I got about maybe three I can I can think of. I had a match with Space Monkey in Marietta, Ohio, where everybody brought bananas. And they threw everybody threw bananas at me, and there was probably about four hundred bananas there. And I mean, there's video. I got to find a video somewhere. <clears throat> and they were throwing bananas everywhere at me. Um, I had a match outside during a rainstorm, which caused a wreck in Charleston, West Virginia. We It was some downtown. It was it was AEW's, the day of AEW's very first show. So, so somebody wanted to put a wrestling show on. It was, I think it was 10, one, whatever it was. But the, the first AIW show was in Charleston, West Virginia. So we have the match and people are driving by and it's pouring freaking rain during my match. And we just hear. Eah. So everyone stops and looks. So what I do is I grab the guy Levi Everett and I, and I go out there and I start fighting next to the car, the right next to the wreck because everyone was looking at us. So I was like, well, I need to go where everyone's looking. So we took it out there and then, Oh man. I had a blindfold match with Sonny Kiss at Greek Town. <laughs> this sounds amazing. Well, I know this one, but go ahead. I need to hear oh. this from your mouth. <laughs> well, the whole story of it was is I had to wear a blindfold because Sonny's ass 
made me want to risk everything. <laughs> so I couldn't go out there with, with, with and, and seeing Sonny's ass. So I had to wrestle on a blindfold. And yeah, and I'm just we're just walking around. We got someone with the ability of Sonny Kiss and a match with basically my kind of match wandering around. So it turned out to be pretty good, you know, because I, I always thought that uh, Jake Roberts and Rick Martell at WrestleMania was actually a very good match and very entertaining match. So, so a lot of it stole a lot from that. Jock, you've had a hell of a career. I want to say thank you because every time I've seen you, not only have you been very generous with your time and very generous with your, your storytelling, uh, but uh, a hell of a career, hell of a entertaining time. Thank you. Thanks, IWC, man. IWC Wrestling, winner takes all. This Saturday, November 4th at Court Time Sports Center in Elizabeth, PA. Uh, Jock's going to be there. He's going to do his thing. Jock, do you want to set that up real quick? Tell him what you're doing and what's going on at the show. Um, so I got my last match uh, against a young kid named Kanan Christopher. And uh, the kid's going to be good one day, but he's he's stuck with Justin Plummer, the owner of IWC. So he's not a very good person. He cost me my career because the stipulation was if I lost, I was done. And a guy named O'Ryan who came in as a commissioner, he made a deal and said, well, you, you, you get one more match, a farewell match. And it's going to be 11-4. Uh, the people at IWC made three parts of a, of a very nice tribute video. They had me basically sit here, and I didn't realize they'd show me the way I look. And they put it out there, and the third one's coming out Thursday, I believe. But uh, it's a, it's a, it's going to be a, it's going to be a bittersweet. Kind of, I, I wouldn't say bitter because you can't be bitter about leaving the business when you've had a good, you've had a good career. I mean, I've had, a, I felt like I've had a really good career. A lot of people, you know, when you meet me and you see me wrestle, you, a lot of times people don't know how to take me because I'm not like everybody else. I'm not what you'd expect. You know, I've got a beer gut, I'm hairy, I'm loud, I'm boisterous. And, um, uh, they never know what to, you know, how, how to, how to take me like wrestling promoters. When they meet me, they ain't got a clue how to use me. And I know how to use my, I know how to, I know how to do it. So if they would, it takes a little bit to, to earn their trust. And the fact that I've had my last two matches in, in two of my favorite towns, which Elizabeth is Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and basically, and then, and in Greek town, because I just absolutely, my favorite place on earth is, is Greek town that I've ever wrestled at. You know, I've had offers to wrestle all over Canada and I just said, can't I wrestle for Greek town? I, you know, it's my favorite place. You want to see me wrestle in Canada? You got to come to Greek town. But the fact that my last two matches are going to be on fight TV. And I got to go out my way. <clears throat> you know, I got to, got to do some pretty goddamn cool things, man. Sorry for using that language, but I've had a lot of good times, man. I mean, uh, you know, I've got to wrestle guys that I got to grow up watching, man. You know, like, I know I bring up the honky-tonk, man, but I got Hacksaw, you know. I've been around Jerry Lawler, who's one of my favorites. Um, I've got to work some really cool people, man, and got to meet a lot of cool people. So I'm not uh, – I'm sad that I, I don't get to see my friends. I think I've done everything that I possibly could do in this business. So it's my turn at 44 years old is to step away – and let these young kids go out there and do the thing. Cause sometimes there ain't nothing worse than an old guy just hanging on, you know, too long. And, and, and it's not to say that I may come back and do, if someone needs a match, you know, I, it, give me some time, but I may do come do one match maybe once or twice a year. But the good thing is I don't have to do it because I'm not locked in and required to be anywhere. So it's not like I'm, you know, I won't be back. I'll be back at Greek town to visit uh, at least once a year in summertime when my kids in out of school and I could take her up there and show her the place. And my family's going to be there with me this weekend. My mother's going with me, my wife, my daughter, we were going up Friday night, making a big deal. Of course I got to get up early because Ohio state plays at noon and I got to play in Rutgers. So I got to get my priorities straight so we're going to watch it at noon and a few of the guys are coming over by the hotel and we're going to have a bunch of drinks beforehand and, and it's it's going to be it's going to be a sad day but 
I'm just sad that I won't get to see my friends as much as I, I, I have. And I, I miss the fans because, honestly, I wouldn't be jack shit if it wasn't for them. You know, they, they took to this big, fat piece of shit with all this charisma. Like, like you know, they took to me, and I, I appreciate that. Jock, thank you. You're- thank you, Jock. Thank you for joining us on the, the show today. Thank you for the, the career that, yeah, that you've had and the, the moments and matches and memories. And um, I don't know if I'm frozen. Okay. Uh, and, uh, you know, good luck with, with everything this weekend. Hey, man, I appreciate that. Thank you all. Um, keep in touch. And uh, maybe I'll see you all around. It's popping in my head at a show. Hell yeah. I'll I'm going to pop over to your house and have some chicken and drinks. Come on, we'll have a bunch of chicken and drinks, buddy. Ch- chicken and waffles, baby. Oh, we'll I'm all see, about that. And I'll see you in the summertime in Toronto when it's actually nice out. Good on you, not yeah. in the wintertime, because you know better. Well, shit, I know about the Canadian winters, boy. Yep. Ooh. Yeah, I'm coming up in the summer. <laughs> yeah, come around when it's nice outside. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Jock, thank you so much for joining us. And, and again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jock. Thanks, fellas. Take care. Have a good one. You too.